Hello MGTOW, hello men, this is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So I've got a topic that I want to talk about, but it's, it's a hard thing to get a handle on. And it has to do with the experiment of you or the experiment of me. Because it feels like our consciousness, you know, our thoughts, the, these words, it, it's kind of like uh, we're watching ourselves in life and we're saying to ourselves, you know, gee, what's going to happen here? <laughs> right? That's, that's how it kind of is with me. Like, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing and then stuff happens and I don't know all the time exactly why. And then, you know, I, I, I've got this conversation in my head saying, well, what happened? And sometimes uh, whatever it is that happened has got me upset or in a bad state or not, you know, focused and my best. Perhaps I'm angry. Perhaps I'm upset. Perhaps I'm depressed. Perhaps I'm hopeless, right? What happened? But here's the thing. The person who's asking that question, it's happened to them too. So, you know, so you're in the experiment. So here you are trying to have a good life, trying to do what you think is right, uh, you know, some sort of guiding consciousness with some overarching moral ethical principle at play here. You know, this is what this is why people get upset when they're treated unfairly and they can't always express it. But, you know, it, it's like just deeply in them. They're moved by some idea, some feeling, and they don't know exactly what it is as they try to think their way out of the situation, to analyze the situation, the problem is that that thinking consciousness is also in the situation. Uh, so it very much is like, you know, a drunk person thinking that they drive better when they're drunk. But of course, the reason why they're thinking that is because mm, they're drunk or they want to become drunk. So this is not... Uh, it's not a valid experiment, you know what I mean? Because the very person running the experiment is in the experiment. Uh, and the forces, the variables at play here are compromising the individual and their ability to make, you know, the valid, healthy, uh, empowering decision. So the people get stuck in this terrible loop of suffering, depression, frustration, anger, hopelessness compounded by to think one's way out of it the person unfortunately doing the thinking has already been submerged in this energy draining maladaptive unhealthy perspective right so so like have you ever said to yourself how can this person not see what they're doing how can they not recognize that their ideology that they're outlook on life will lead to a complete breakdown of our relationships and our society. One individual's misguided feelings are not and cannot be the criteria and the standard that we base our interactions on because obviously that one person is potentially and you know misguided. They're they're not thinking properly and you recognize this is what's happening to us, right? Like, uh, the most easily triggered person in the room is saying, hey, I'm triggered by this, therefore, the other 99% of the people must conform. Otherwise, you know, they are betraying this fundamental value of individual worth. So you see, it's kind of like a hostage taking of an idea. Right? And you can take this good idea of individual worth and you can use it in this terrible way, you know, of the one person saying, you know, I'm triggered, I need to be able to eat all of the food. You know, here's food for 10 people, but I need to be able to eat all of it. Otherwise, I will feel, you know, this way and you will have made me feel. You get the idea. You, you know, you understand how uh, it's a shifting of responsibility for the individual's internal state. So now we are held hostage by that individual's internal state and their ability to manipulate, contrive, gaslight, confuse, uh, damage the situation around them. 
So this is part of the reason why you're seeing this epidemic of, I, you know, you could say narcissism, right? But it's this self-obsession and this uh, this instinctual per- protection, you know, of the very ideological mindset that they're trapped in, which they can't see their way out of because they are trapped in it. And when hope, when a greater possibility, perhaps taking responsibility, perhaps changing your environment presents itself to them, they don't see it. Now, this is not an excuse for their behavior, but this is some insight as to who and what you're dealing with. Like, this is not an exchange of ideas. This is not us having a debate and then coming to some, you know, compromise or some solution or some, you know, thing that considers both sides of it. That's not what this is. This is people locked in on their mindset, their metaphysical outlook on the world, which enables them to be a tyrant emotionally, psychologically against other people, understand that the more desperate the person is, that the more inclined they are in this direction, okay, which does not absolve them of any of the responsibility of it. So now you're, you know, you're interacting and you're saying, you know, I think we should have clean water, right, perfectly reasonable. They're not arguing, you know, and they're saying, no, right, we have to be able to, you know, damage all this water. Uh, They're not really arguing that point. It seems, you know, like you are, (laughs) right? You actually (laughs) took things on face value. Uh, No, they're arguing a much different, deeper point that they're in charge, that mommy loves them, that their fairy godfather is here to, you know, endorse them and backs them, And if it were not true, then they wouldn't be here, right? (laughs) It's it's actually a nice little wonderful uh, combining of the Attila the Hun, you know, forceful tyrant, and a kind of psychological, (laughs) reasonable, you know, uh, scientifically based justification. Uh, Yeah, you you know, using uh, actual reason and logic to put forth this completely uh, instinctual uh, reactive human animal trait you know and so the person is you know completely crazy behaving in a manner that is completely destructive and everybody else is like what are you doing and um, yeah they've got an explanation right and it seems perfectly reasonable to them it seems so reasonable to them So that's what you're arguing with. You're not arguing over the point. You're arguing on the personality, right? Like, uh, I've been exposed to a lot of interesting personalities over the last years. Uh, And this is actually part of really what I'm talking about. Uh, You know, and there's no way for their uh, mindset, for their ideology, for their behavior to not affect me. And my ability to competently deal with that situation and navigate that situation is compromised by the fact that their behavior has got me frustrated, angry, sick, feeling mistreated, right? So it's hard, you know, is, is what I'm saying to be emotionally, psychologically, physically wrapped up in the world, in our lives, and then to be able to guide it and to see it and to even be sympathetic to ourselves, right? Like, you know, I put out the request that you just stop beating yourself up. I'm not, at, I'm not even asking that you try to be your own friend or try to be your own coach or try to take care of yourself because I think that it has been um, conditioned out of us. So all I'm asking for, and this is of myself really, you know, but yeah, uh, is to stop beating myself up and trying to, you know, thwart my own efforts and find fault within my own consciousness and my own mind, you know, uh, here's a question, okay, where do we live? Do we live, now, now, if you're hungry and you're starving and you're cold, um, that's going to dominate your thoughts, right? Uh, but let's say that, you know, you're okay, it's not great, but it's not so bad, uh, but 
you're really angry and upset internally. So your thoughts are all like, wow, this is terrible, man. I can't stand this. Uh, <laughs> right? It could happen. I, I think it happens all the time with us. Right? So the situation is not so bad, but the thoughts are really bad. Where, where, where are you in this situation? Could you be Win Hof and withstand the cold and withstand the hunger? I think, you know, that you do have a power like that within you, in your consciousness. Could you freak out and panic and succumb and go into a metabolic freak out over the situation? Yes, yes. And at some point, that might be the only option. Uh, do your thoughts and consciousness affect your metabolism, right? So, you know, you, you, you've got a lot going on there, okay? And I guess my suggestion for the day is just stop finding fault with yourself. You know, the, these are, try to get back to your real thoughts. I believe that a lot of this is secondhand thought. You know, th these are like, you know, the, the ugly things that the parent might have said, that uh, an envious friend might have said, that a bad manager might have said. Uh, that women in our society in general say that media represents your particular uh, demographic group as. I believe that we take these things on <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, punish ourselves with them, uh, that they're not even our own thoughts. So try to get back to, you know, just not beating yourself up within your own thoughts. And let's see how that works out. But I'm going to leave it at that for now, so let me know what you think about this and these subjects. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. I really appreciate everybody who's helping out the Howard Dare channel. Please find my uh, Cash App donation link and help out if you can. And if you can't, try to use, you know, the content and the people that you listen to to build your life up. And I'm going to try to provide some more insight in that area. So join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.